Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, I'm Tony Verico from White Diamond American Eskimos, and I'm here today with Dr. John Robb at his Protective Pets Veterinary Center located in Newtown, Connecticut. And we brought our litter here today for their puppy vaccinations. And Dr. Robb is going to go into detail on the protocol and the recommended um, conditions. Okay, yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, you know, the key thing, these are little dogs. And um, all vaccines come prepackaged with a volume of one cc. You can't give these little guys one cc of vaccine. You could kill them. It's just too much for their immune system. It's been said, you're not vaccinating dog, you're vaccinating immune system. That is just one of these perpetual lies that have been said over and over. You're vaccinating a little dog with a smaller immune system. They need a smaller dose. For instance, these guys here, I gave 0 0.3 cc's, okay, of distemper parvo. I only recommend this, uh, vaccinating for distemper parvo and rabies. Those are the only vaccines I recommend. So I don't even like the distemper parvo adeno parainfluenza -influ injection because it's a foreign one and I don't think you need those other two. Distemper parvo is what I do. Um, if at all possible, 12 weeks would be a good uh, time to start because the passive immunity from the mother has worn off a lot enough that they'll respond to a vaccine. In other words, they get colostrum from the mother. In that colostrum are antibodies present and that protects the puppy until they wear off. And if you vaccinate them too young, that colostrum just wipes out the vaccine. There's no right. response. So if at all possible, 12 weeks, and then repeat the second dose at about 15 weeks. That's what I like to do, three weeks apart. And that's distemper parvo. So two shots there. Rabies, wait until at least six months. I do a lot of titers. Titers are used to measure antibody response. A lot of vaccines are improved because they give a certain titer and they get federal approval because it's responding with antibodies. You can measure antibodies. Most people, you can relate it by talking about mumps, measles, and rubella. Both right. you and I, Tony, have been vaccinated for that. Right. If you wanted to go work at a hospital, they're not gonna ask you for your vaccine record. They're gonna take a blood sample. And if you've got circulating antibodies to mumps, measles, and rubella, you start work, which is true in 95% of the population. Same thing should be done with pets. In other words, rabies at six months, distemper parvo, 12 weeks, 15 weeks, and then when you titer at seven months, you find out, did we achieve immunity? And if we did, I'd retire again in three years, okay? One of the challenges is the rabies law, which in many states requires over-vaccination. It's tough because we as veterinarians would never do that to ourselves. We get a rabies shot. I got one in vet school. It's been good for 35 years. I would not inject myself when I have circulating antibodies that shows I'm already immune. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the challenges for veterinarians and pet owners not to over-vaccinate pets, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially these little guys, okay? So, so any, anything else, Tony? So more isn't better. No, more is not better. A higher titer only means that the pet has been over-vaccinated and has more chance of having issues from over-vaccination. Circulating through the liver. And Adverse kidneys. events can occur. You can break down red blood cells, tumors at the ejection sites, anaphylactis. So uh, more is not better. If you can measure any antibodies at all, that pet is just as protected as one that has a much higher titer. Right. The difference, of course, is the one with a very high titer has been over-vaccinated. And that's common in my field. We're learning to do titers, it's become a more acceptable practice, definitely with distemper parvo. Rabies, we recently had legislation passed in Delaware where that can do a titer and write an exemption based on the titer of the rabies shot, okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, You're Dr. Welcome. Rob. I've learned so much from being with you and that's the main reason why we bring our pets here and you're in our contracts when we bring them to their, when we bring them to their new homes, they're made aware of this. Thanks. And uh, I'll put a link down below to his Protect the Pets uh, website and White Diamond American Eskimos. Thank you. Okay, God bless.